Invest Africa, proudly brought to you by KPMG. Hello and a warm welcome to this week's edition of Invest Africa. I'm Nozi Pumbandra. Now, the World Bank report has it that growth in sub Saharan Africa remains robust at 4.9%. Now, one of the spin offs of this increasing stability in the region is a growing appetite from investors for real estate asset exposure in the African market. Pilani Nyalunga compiled us this report. The economic growth seems to be the key driver of change in Africa. Standard Bank reports that the attraction of real estate across Africa lies in its development potential. But it is not without its challenges, as investors soon find out countries like Zimbabwe and Nigeria have been singled out. I think Zimbabwe speaks for itself. I mean, if you look at ownership of farm agricultural property, um, you know, a lot of it got taken away a few years ago. That's, that's a fact. So, you know, for people who had pre, prior to that invested a lot in, in agricultural um, land, you know, on their land in, in production capacity, you know, they, they lost a lot in a lot of cases. I think that's well publicized. Um, the queer now, you know, it, it's, it's spilling over into indigenization of uh, commercial companies in, you know, in major cities. So it's gone further than, you know, uh, than just agricultural property uh, or, or ag agriculture that's gone into businesses. Does that spill over into to commercial property as well? I don't know the answer to that, but the environment is generally one of redistribution um, in certain ways. So one has to always be careful when investing large sums of money into property in such a country. The Standard Bank report states that the growth in GDP and rise of the middle class leads to demand for a grade A shopping centers and office developments. Nigeria has been identified as one of African markets that will attract investments and shopping mall developments. But due to policy issues, the Nigerian market is inaccessible. There is need for construction in Nigeria. There is threat of affordable houses for Nigerians. There is need for homes, in, to, to families in Nigeria to have homes. And therefore, the demand for this in, in, in that industry is there. Now, we keep talking about the challenges. Yes, there are challenges, but at least... There's a lot of opportunity as, as well as we, and we've always known that in the crisis, there's always chaos and there's always opportunity, depending on the part that you focus on. In this particular in industry, the chaos is in the challenges that we face, the financing challenges and the legal issue. I mean, the, 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 the land re, 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 regulation issue that they face. However, some guys are moving through all these crises. They are moving through these challenges to be able to focus on the opportunity. I mean, the implication of this is that there's tendency that a large portion of houses in Nigeria do not have any form of legal title or even approved building plan by the Land Bureau. But at least the point they are assisting. The economic growth measures the actual productivity of the country within the year. So it's not about, oh, do the houses have legal title? Are they approved by the Land Bureau before they are built? But at least they are built. John Luce, a property economist at FNB, says, one of the challenges in investing in Africa's property is a lack of knowledge of the target market. This is one of the big challenges with investing in Africa at the moment is a lack of data. Um, that's going to take some time before, you know, as econ economies develop, normally, you know, the government agencies develop with them and, you know, amongst those, the statistical agencies. And you get more of a picture then from statistics of investing in property. Now in South Africa we're spoilt. We've got all sorts of, you know, IPD, commercial property statistics, RUDA, you know, um, FNB and ABSA on the residential property side. So there's a host of data available to us to analyze the markets and their performance and the returns and so on. Not always the case, um, you know, when one, when one moves north where deeds data may not be um, electronic yet, uh, electronically provided yet and so on. So. Um, that's the challenge. Africa is the next investment frontier in real estate sector. However, with untapped retail potential in many countries, investors must understand the context and policies to make it a smooth and profitable experience. Pilani Nyalonga, CNBC Africa. <laughs>
in the studio to look at property and real estate in Africa is Brett Abramsa, a consultant at Terrace Africa. Thomas Riley, CEO of the advisory arm of Sunlam's Real Estate Africa Fund. And in our Lagos studios, we are joined by Benga Oleyinian, principal partner at Benga Oleyinian and Associates. Welcome, gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us. Now, Thomas, I want to throw this first question at you. What does Africa's growing consumer market mean for investors who are realizing that they have an appetite for the property space? Well, Norsi, I think at the end of the day, if one looks at, at the whole questions of the, 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 you know, the topic of the consumer market and the demographics in general you know, that, uh, that the African market puts on the table today, it's a, it's a compelling prospect you know, for, the, for the general retail market. I think if, if one looks at, um, at the amount of retail shopping centers, as an example, that are available in the market today, um, you know, take a city like Lagos as an example, a city of uh, close on 20 odd million people, two main shopping centers you know that service that uh, that that growing population now at the end of the day it's it's arguable that you know a lot of the population may not be the type of shopper that would go to a traditional shopping mall right. um, but if you still break that down into your your normal income tax paying uh, you know individual out there there are probably 45 million people in lagos that could afford to shop at a, at a retail shopping center but can't because of an inadequate supply of uh, of adequate retail space so at the end of the day, you know, if one looks at the, the whole supply and demand equation for mm. quality retail across the continent, and it's not particular to Lagos, it's, you know, one has a similar situation in Accra, in Tanzania, in Dar es Salaam, Maputo, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's an, there's an inadequate supply um, to service that consumer at the end of the day. And I think that's not only the, the problem at the end of the day, that's also the opportunity and something that we, you know, as the, as the Sunlum, uh, you know, Africa Real Estate Fund, uh, you know, we're trying to capitalize on that, uh, on that opportunity and the growth. I, I do want to get into the Lagos case study a little bit with Benga, but before I do that, let me come to you, Brett, and just get a, a broad comparison about how is Africa faring globally when it comes particularly to retail expansion, um, as uh, Thomas has already touched on that. If you look at the global retailers, you know, a lot of them have expanded into the so-called brick economies, and Africa is the next opportunity for them. So we are seeing a lot of interest from foreign retailers, uh, such as the likes of Walmart, as well as Carrefour from, from the French company expanding into Africa to the Francophone countries. Uh, but also from within our own continent, we've got the likes of ShopRite and Pick and Pay mm. going north uh, from South Africa and, and really taking advantage of those um, fundamentals that Thomas was talking about. Of course, Bernard, let's come to you and bring Lagos into the conversation. We've seen ShopRite Holdings building up to 10 malls uh, in Nigeria thus far. What are investors looking for when they come into Nigeria with a view to invest into the property market? Thank you very much. Um, basically, the first thing they look at is um, uh, to try to get the data, which unfortunately is missing in Nigeria. Uh, most uh, investors who come into Nigeria are looking for data with regards to rentals passing on properties, with regards to government legislation as well. Um, the interesting thing is that the issue of title is one that has been worrisome for majority of investors coming into Nigeria. Um, so what we tend to do is to ensure that we direct them to the right bodies to make their inquiries. Um, title has been the major fare for majority of uh, foreign investors coming into Nigeria. Um, right now, we are gradually getting a data bank of um, rentals passing on commercial re real estate, on retail, on housing, uh, residential housing as well. So data is actually available with professionals practicing in Nigeria. But one of the concerns, which is what people come to us for, is with regards to how to verify titles, which you can really verify if you do it right. Now, outside of Lagos, Thomas, I'm sure there are other hotspots in the Africa property market that are uh, within your radar. Now, can you talk us through a little bit about, you know, where are those uh, areas? So you, you, if you have an interest in Lagos, fair enough, those are the challenges that you're likely to take on. But other than those risks, where else can you look? Yeah, Norsi, I think, you know, as far as we're concerned, the real opportunity that we've tried to focus on to date has been in the Anglophone countries. So, um, you know, we found that, that Francophone countries are a little bit difficult 
um, in terms of not only you know just the, the language barriers and so on from our perspective, but also in terms of the legal um, you know the legal systems and so on. So we focus more on, on anglophone countries. I think you know a, a country like uh, like Ghana and Accra and spe specifically the capital is is probably considered to be a soft landing. Um, you know, as a result, we purchased the Accra Mall together with Atterbury, um, you know, approximately a year ago. And, and that's proved to be a, a good uh, jurisdiction to, to invest in. We're very happy with, uh, with what's going on there. If one looks um, outside of, of West Africa then, so, so Ghana and Nigeria, um, East Africa is also very exciting. Mm. I think, you know, um, countries like Tanzania, if one looks at Dar es Salaam, mm. that's uh, poised to be one of the, the hotspots in terms of growth of population over the next hundred years. So the United Nations expecting, you know, the population to, to grow enormously in that city. Um, Nairobi as well, Kenya, very exciting destination. Maputo as well in Mozambique, we also quite like that. So those are probably the hotspots. I'd say Zambia, um, Zambia was also on, a, on our radar, but I think you know they've also had a few issues, for example, um, as far as an inter international investor is concerned, um, where the other economies are providing pretty much dollar leases at the right. end of the day, dollar income streams and dollar products at the end of the day. Zambia, as a result of SR33, has moved to a quacha based um, you know, rental scenario, so one cannot invoice in, in dollars in hard currency. And I think as far as the international investor is concerned, that possibly taints that that scenario to an extent. Um, but I'd say, you know, those, those four mentioned countries are probably, you know, the hotspots at this point in time. Now, Brett, you know, to a large extent, uh, when we talk about the story of property in Africa, it's always within the parameters of South African retailers expanding into the rest of the continent. Is that an accurate reflection or are we also finding foreign investors from outside of the continent who are perhaps finding that there, there are too many restrictions in their own domestic and regional markets coming in and trying to get a slice of the pie in Africa? I touched on that question a bit earlier and uh, I really feel that the growth from a retail perspective is still being driven by the likes of the South African retailers as well as the fashion retailers in South Africa. But there are foreign retailers looking at opportunities in Africa. We've got Zara which has entered, so the Inditex group has entered in South Africa and they will look to expand and into formal trading opportunities which for instance that Thomas is purchasing. So. You know, in future, they will not go into the informal sector. They will look at formal trading opportunities within malls. And the growth of these malls and, and the more that we see them being put up around the continent is, is, is opportunistic for these uh, retailers.